This has got to stop. And it stops starting now. I'm gonna build a rolling wood scrap cart that goes to 11. I've seen all those other rolling wood carts on YouTube and they're all boring. All they do is roll and store wood. Mine's gonna do the same thing, but I have an idea. And this idea is the greatest of all time. The greatest of all time. The greatest of all time. Too often we store wood and the smaller pieces get lost and forgotten. You can't see them, they're buried. So stick around because things might get a little weird around here, or at least a little more organized, more tidy, and a lot less embarrassing. What would a scrap wood lumber cart be if I didn't make at least some of it out of scrap wood? I can't wait to show you what innovative idea I came up with that elevates this rolling wood cart to the next level. But before we get to that, I need to build the base. I looked at a ton of rolling scrap wood carts on YouTube and found that most of them are very similar with variations of the same features. So when it comes to designing something that is ultimately different than everyone else's, well, that's hard to do without compromising the essential features that anyone would need. So I looked at the rolling wood carts from Fix This Build That and Shop Nation and blended those two designs together. And then I added my own twist at the end. I didn't use any of their available plans, so I came up with my own measurements. I used a fair amount of plywood on this project, as well as 2x4s, but anytime I drilled into the plywood veneer, I used my Ryobi countersink bits. This helps the screw head sit flush or even shy of the veneer without damaging it. Building the base is just the beginning, and making sure everything is square will make this build much easier. Anything out of square will affect everything else down the line. I'm trying to do this project as economical as possible. So to cut a few corners, I bought plywood with only one side finished, two pieces, and another piece with both sides finished. So I saved about 20 bucks, 15 bucks by doing that. The other thing is I'm putting casters on this. These are four inch casters and none of them have brakes. The best deal on the market that I can find for caster wheels is at Harbor Freight. These are rated for about 225 pounds a piece. I'm doing six wheels because these carts can carry a lot of weight and you don't want cheap wheels that are too small that are gonna be flat and hard to push. Now here's where I cut a few corners. I didn't buy any of them with brakes. I would recommend buying at least two wheels with brakes. You don't need all of them with brakes, but Harbor Freight didn't have one with the four screws and a brake at four inches. So, for six bucks a wheel, that's a pretty good deal when they're $15 at Home Depot and about 10 to $15 anywhere on Amazon for four inch wheels. So take that into consideration. I have these two pieces laid out for the brackets and this down here is a spacer block. I will not be connecting that because the base of these will be connected to the base of the entire platform. So I have my little plan that I drew up here. I've got them at a six degree angle tilt and I need to measure the distance between these two, which brings us to 10 and 3 sixteenths. With the stop block, I'll create five of these that I need and then each shelf will be about 18 inches apart. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut each one with the stop block so they're all identical and then hook them all together. It's important that all of these are exactly the same, that they're identical, that these all are flush and flat to a certain degree within about one or two millimeters. This is gonna be the hardest part of the project. Let me show you a lot of different techniques that I use to get this. I have all of the shelf pieces cut and in order. A smart way of going about it is using a spacer block. I'm too lazy for that, so here's what I've done. I have them all lined up. Take a speed square, my big one, and we're gonna transfer the line that I've already have drawn on each of these and just put it across here, just like this. And you do that for all of them. And then you put it all together. Putting these together can be a bit of a challenge. Once you put the first one together the best you can, or as level as you can, you can book match the others by just placing the pieces on top. So when you clamp this, this doesn't go inward because I have this spacer piece right here, which will be connected. But I'm gonna start by connecting this one and this one and working my way that way. 
Getting these rungs to line up just right can be challenging, but let me show you exactly how it's done so it's simple. First, you're gonna line this up right with the line that you drew right here, and then put this positioning square right here and apply this clamp. Then you're gonna apply this clamp right here and make sure that these seams are lined up perfectly. Once you have that, you have a perfect 90 degree angle. Then take your larger trigger clamp and clamp on this side. Now it's in perfect position. All you gotta do is screw in here, remove all your clamps, and screw in at the top. And that's pretty much it. Once the shelf braces were complete, I went back to the rolling base to use my carpenter square to draw a line where the shelf braces will line up. You can use a chalk line as well for this. I used pocket hole screws to anchor the shelf braces into the plywood base. It is so important to make sure these are lined up exactly. It will be so much easier to fasten the following plywood pieces if the shelf braces are in alignment. You know, for as big as a garage this is, it still doesn't feel big enough. And as you can see, I got quite a mess back here. Playing musical chairs with all my stuff can sometimes be a little tough, but we make do with what we got. And I gotta say, I'm pretty blessed to have such a nice place to do my woodworking in. Ripping down large sheets of plywood can be a breeze when you have a large workbench integrated with a job site table saw. Only one side of this plywood sheet will be visible, so I saved a few bucks using single finish side plywood. I can use screws to fasten this, but I think this 16 gauge finish nailer do just the trick. Take note that I left the middle stud half exposed so that I could attach the plywood supports. It's easy to overlook this detail. Also, if you like my Ryobi 16 gauge finish nailer that I used to attach all these plywood pieces or any of the tools and products I used in this video, then click on the description for Amazon affiliate links to purchase what you need. This supports Dude Sawdust because we receive a small commission at no extra charge to you. While I'm doing strips, I'm gonna go ahead and turn this around and finish the other side. That way this will be all complete over here and then I can focus over there. So let's get these on. This side is for storing plywood only. I have a ton of cutoffs that I will store here, but it will also work great for storing full sheets of plywood for future projects. The shelf braces have a six degree tilt, so the plywood can lean against it. And I added a toe kick so the plywood then doesn't slide off the edge. Adding these supports for the quarter inch plywood shelves will prevent any bowing. They are optional except for the back of the large unfinished plywood face. Did I just mention quarter inch plywood? Yeah, to do this right, I had to custom cut each shelf. This can get hairy, so here's a little tip. When you're doing the custom cuts on the bandsaw or the jigsaw or the scroll saw, whatever you're using, make sure you mark these so you know exactly where they go because this, these sizes are custom fit for each of these squares. So what I do is mark the back, F for front, row one, column two. That would be row one, column two. So that goes right here. So when I place it and I'm doing these cuts, I know that this is the front. Otherwise these custom cuts will start getting mixed up and you might confuse yourself. So just keep that in mind. I was regretting getting wheels without locks on them. But I gotta say, this garage is really flat and it's gonna have a lot of weight on this thing. So I don't think that not having locks in the wheel is gonna make a difference whatsoever. So I think I saved a few bucks and scored a win. With the plywood storage side complete, I'm primed to finish the scrap wood storage bin side. First item of business is installing the front face. I opted for the impact driver and screws rather than the less sturdy 16 gauge finish nails. I have five dividers and now I want to give a bit of a design. I don't want to go anything too fancy. I could go really curvy, but we're not going to do that with this project. I think I'm thinking of something very 45 like. Let's keep it simple, but you can do whatever you want. Make it your own. I fasten the dividers with pocket hole screws. Pocket hole joinery makes these types of projects a breeze. If you want to check out how I made this one-of-a-kind pocket hole station with Kaizen foam tool storage, then check out the video I made. I'll leave a link in the description of this video. Check it out. One more thing before we wrap up this rolling wood cart. I'm going to build a see-through shelf right here with this acrylic 
piece. This is a 12 by 36 inch piece and I got these triangle brackets that we're going to use to support that shelf. Since the acrylic is 36 inches wide, I need the shelf to be 37 inches wide so I can cut grooves that the clear acrylic can slide into. About a quarter inch depth is all I need. Getting all of the grooves to line up is pretty easy to do without a dado stack. The key is to make only one cut and then repeat that cut on each of the sides of the shelf. After making one cut on each side, slide the fence over just a hair and repeat another cut on each of the boards. Each time you complete the three cuts, you will slowly move your fence so as to creep up on your total desired width. Be sure to stop in between the sets of three cuts to track your progress until you achieve that perfect fit. After prepping the pocket holes on each of the three shelf pieces, you'll notice this was the only part of the build that I used wood glue. It's totally optional, but you'll always have a more stable and secure fit when you use wood glue. I can't tell you enough how much I love my Duratec positioning squares. They make glue ups like these so much easier. They give me the peace of mind knowing any box I make will be square and this shelf is no exception. In keeping with the theme of scrap wood management, these three triangle pieces were cutoffs from the five dividers. They make for great shelf braces and should be attached so they line up perfectly with the dividers just below them. I strongly advise investing in a child clamp for this part of the project. My daughter Taya didn't want to be on camera. I think because our hair and makeup crew were off that day, so I promised her that all she had to do was hold the shelf in place and the YouTube world would only see the back of her head. Well, I've been waiting for this moment for quite some time. I have this acrylic here. We're gonna pop this in. I gotta say so far, I like how it looks. And it's gonna work out really nice for those small pieces of scrap. Like a glove. I have had these two small boxes full of scraps, smaller scraps, and frankly, I've had them so long, I don't even remember what's at the bottom of them because I can't even see them. Now with this bad boy, problem solved. So let's fill her up. Building this rolling scrap wood cart has been long overdue. Frankly, anytime I was shooting a video, I would tend to avoid showing the huge hoarding mess of wood that sat in that corner. I'm sure some of you noticed because I had a hard time completely hiding it. And if you are one of those that judge me, consider it a righteous judgment. I deserved it. I know. But now that this wood rolling cart is finished, I have relished in the opportunity to organize those scraps that still hold value in this woodworker's heart. Sometimes in life we need to do a little spring cleaning, decluttering of our homes, our hearts, and our minds. Maybe that's why this project is so fitting for this time of year. You see, spring is upon us as the flowers start to bloom and the grass gets a bit greener. As I dusted off each piece of wood, I would look at it and say quietly in my heart, does this spark joy? And if the answer was no, then to the waste bin it went. The feeling of joy is a personal one, and no one can tell you what sparks joy in you. But as Marie Kondo explains, the spark of joy is the feeling of a little thrill, as if the cells in your body are slowly rising. To be honest with you, I didn't feel any cells in my body rising, but the sifting through all this scrap wood surely made me sneeze a lot from all the dust which is the only thing that truly rose. If you like cool shop projects, then do us both a favor and click on this dope, completely original drill charging station that will blow your mind and in no doubt, spark some serious joy. See ya.